Hey you guys, we're going to talk a little bit about Norman Lewis, who was an American painter, a scholar, and a teacher, which means he was a student, he was a teacher, and he was a painter. And he did some sculpting too. He actually did some sculpting with Augusta Savage, who's a famous um, sculptor that emerged during the time of the Harlem Renaissance. Lewis's art, you guys, it focused more on black urban life and the community and his community and the struggles. And, you know, he often depicted things like evictions and um, police brutality and stuff like that. He was born in Harlem, New York on July 23rd, 1909, like I told you guys, and he died August 27, 1979. Quote, he said, I would like to be above criticism so that my work didn't have to be discussed in terms of the fact that I am black. Unfortunately, throughout his career, like he was overlooked. He was one of the first African-American artists that started doing this abstract expressionalism, which is um, something where he used abstract art to express the things around him and his life experience. So he felt like it seemed hypocritical, quote, that America was fighting against an enemy whose master race ideas was echoed at home uh, with segregated armed forces. This is like, you know, World War II, you guys. There's World War One and there's World War Two. So he was involved in World War Two and he was just surprised that, hey, like, how is the how how are we segregated here in America in the armed forces, but we're going over seas to fight racism. It made no sense to him. So his art was very abstract. It included lots of colors. Um, and if you look very closely, there there are people, there are conversations happening, there are scenes happening, there's struggle happening, there's pain happening. Um, later on in his career, he got married and he had a child and he focused more on being an educator and a teacher. Um, he traveled a lot uh, in his World War II experience, which allowed him to get to um, see a lot of places and this also was something that helped influence his art I love the colors in this piece it almost looks like things are like pulled down like I said Norman Lewis was an amazing painter scholar and teacher and he was associated with that abstract expressionism just like we see in this picture right here this beautiful picture how he used abstract art to express how he felt about his surroundings and his community and and to depict those struggles so we're going to analyze some of his art and we're going to create a piece influenced by his art okay so now we know a little bit about norman lewis's life we're going to analyze a piece of his art so this is an abstract portrait of his art and it's called New York Subway. This is a this is an image. This is his way of explaining um, normal life on a New York subway. Um, how many people do you see here? Let's analyze this. One, two, three. I can tell this person because that looks like a hat. And then four. That looks like a woman. And do you see the different colors he used? I love the way he used yellow. He didn't use yellow everywhere. He used yellow twice on this man's face and this woman's dress. And it makes me think, is there a connection between this man and this woman over here? I'm looking at these fingers. Look at them crumply looking fingers right there. What does that mean? What are those, does, it, does that mean something is broken? Let's look at the lines. Look at how each face has several lines creating to create the image. Lots of lines, like you're going over and over and over. Um, yeah, the abstractness, let's make sure we see two hats here. They're not the same color. I see earrings. I see feet and shoes. I almost see, um, this looks like the old school shoe with the little white thing on the top with the black shoes with the tuxedo. So this man might be a fancy man. So we're going to try to recreate this piece right here. So the supplies we're going to need to create this piece, we're going to need Sharpies and we're going to use watercolors to create this so let's get started I know that I have one two three four people so the first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna create some abstract heads to make sure I have my four people and then I'm gonna go from there I'm gonna put a hat on two of them and then I'm gonna go from there okay okay so I'm gonna create my four heads so I'm using a sharpie instead of a pencil first you might want to use a pencil first 
but I'm just using a Sharpie because this is abstract art. So I feel like there is no messing up. You can always turn something into something else. So um, we've got one person over here and you're just gonna look at the picture and do what you feel like you see. It looks like her head is doing some craziness and she's got a skinny neck and then she's got this huge belly that's coming around. Yeah, I can see her back. We can see that I can see her back over there. And it looks like she's got an arm. And I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm drawing this the best way I can. We wanna, we wanna make sure we're analyzing the colors because different colors mean different things. And you know, the fact that he's using a lots of blue and he's talking about the struggles in our community and things of that such makes me think that there may be lots of sadness happening in this community um, of his that he was living in at the time. And I'm making sure I write details, but I'm going to do this one person so that you can see how you are going to create the hair and the head by using lines. So you see this line? I'm gonna create the head by just keep keep going over that line. 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 There you go. Now I'm gonna create the head. And I'm just gonna keep going around that head. Keep going around that head. And just keep going. Right? Because that's what it looks like to me. And now it looks like she has these eyeballs. And I'm just gonna make my eyeballs look abstract. She's got a nose. And she's got, what else has she got? She's got some lips. Everybody's lips are gonna look different. She's got this cool hat on. Right? And she's got some kind of cool ruffles happening in the front of her dress here. Oh, she's got on high heels. Shut up, girl. You went somewhere fancy. So I put on her high heels. So let's just measure the second head, third head, and fourth head. So the second head looks like it's very odd. And then the third head is kind of shaped like a head a little bit more. And it also has like a hairline beanie. And then we've got another hat. This hat looks like it's going like this. And I'm just gonna keep drawing what I see with this Sharpie. I'll come back to you when it's time to paint. I'm gonna keep drawing this. Okay, so I finished drawing mine with the Sharpie. There's a lot of places where I feel like I messed up, but I didn't care. I just kept going like up here and on the hat. It's very important in this project and analyzing uh, Norman Lewis's work is that we pay attention to detail. Like you cannot just make a head. That head has several lines inside of it. You cannot just make the hat up here on the second person. That hat has several different types of lines in it. And this piece says a lot of stuff. I also noticed when I was drawing this, this woman here who out of everybody seems happy and but also shy. And I could tell these are her hands. Maybe they're doing something like this and her legs are turned inwards, which to me indicates like shyness. So now the next part of this is to just watercolor it. So we have an abstract piece we made of Norman Lewis's, and now we're going to watercolor it. Some of the colors we're gonna use are, are not, may not be the colors that Norman um, Lewis used because we may not have those colors. So let's get to it. Okay, so I'm finishing up my painting. Can you guys see how I'm doing here? I paid lots of attention to detail. I forgot her earring. This is watercolors, you guys. So I'm using watercolors, like I said in the beginning. I, I know that this is supposed to be white, but it's just like doing something to my, doing something, doing, doing something. Look at these people. They're dancing. They're dancing. They're dancing, 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 dancing. Can you see good? No glare? Okay. Real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Let me grab some yellow. I always like to, even if I'm not, if it, even if it, the color's not there, 
if there's any extra i like to fill the space i always tell you guys when we're doing we're painting or fill the space from corner to corner to corner to corner from corner to corner to corner to corner the whole thing should be full of color right that's called filling the space if if you're doing color if you're doing black and white that's different but here is my my uh, my interpretation my uh, replica of Norman Lewis's near subway and so your job is to look at this picture here the Norman Lewis pause the film pause it and then create now remember what I did I used sharpies to create the scene and create the picture the best I can and then I went in with watercolors and I just watercolored it. I actually use some different color Sharpies too, just to add some accents. So you can use different color Sharpies too. It doesn't just have to be black. And so, Norman Lewis, what a wonderful guy. I